Welcome into Rover Sports. It is Wednesday, and we are one day away from Eagles Green Bay Packer football. I got two legendary Eagles guests sitting right to my left. First, I'm going to start off with Bitter Bird's own Adrian FedQ. He's had a longtime YouTube channel, and he's really covered the footprint here of Eagles football for a long, long time. And Adrian, how are you tonight, man? Welcome oh. into Rover Sports. Welcome to the Rover Zone, Adrian. Happy Wednesday, everybody. We are one more day away from Eagles football. <laughs> one more day until we get to see Carson Wentz. And all those mechanical changes. We'll see what he could do. One more day until Derek Barnett. First round pick. Let's see what he could do. Nelson Aguilar. All this talk about him all off season. What can he do? So, so many storylines going into tomorrow. Obviously, the dumpster fire at cornerback. Who can step up? Right. So, a lot of different things to keep an eye on tomorrow night. Absolutely, Adrian. And, and this is also the same Lambeau field that old Chip and Sam Bradford used to trot down a lot. Yeah. And I'm looking right at E-Rock. They call him. I think that's your YouTube name, the legendary E-Rock. I mean, this guy, E-Rock, one of the first, you know, <laughs> Eagles YouTubers ever, you know, <laughs> celebrity sighting today in oh, Chili's no. getting getting to meet you for the first <laughs> time. Little yeah. starstruck, you know, and uh, oh, we, we have now. E-Rock right here. And E-Rock, how excited are you for this season, man? And well, we uh, this are season one of Eagles day football. away. There it one is. day away from being sick of the preseason after 15 <laughs> minutes of football. Yeah. But, l- listen, training training camps like like the hors d'oeuvres, right? Uh, that's the that's the cracker tray, the the, the guacamole dip of the NFL. R- right. Maybe. And then, and then the preseason is the salad. You don't Cheese like and the crackers. salad. You don't like the salad, but it's there, so you're gonna eat it. So you're gonna enjoy the preseason. But what do you want? You want that nice juicy steak. Mm, yes. So part of what being <laughs> one day. Away from Eagles football is being and, and that also much- the fourth week of the preseason's like I, I I don't know maybe it's like you're finishing up like a terrible salad or, or or maybe you're having just more salad or they bring out extra bread and you're like I want to see the real entree right now but last year you had Carson Wentz uh <laughs> Chase Daniel was a complete dumpster fire last year Andrew Gardner you know he was he was thrown out to slaughter last year but but last year's preseason you had Carson you had Doug Peterson it seems now that you got guys kind of understand your place now with Doug Peterson and with Carson Wentz now after a full year with him. Yeah. And, and now Doug has some weapons to play with. You got all Sean Jeffrey coming in here, Torrey Smith, the free agent acquisition. So he's going to be able to open up that playbook a little bit more this year. No more of that, that, you know, third, third and eight, you go wide receiver screen. No more of that. Open it up. All Sean Jeffrey going deep uh, down the sidelines. Can't wait. Yeah, the, yeah. Eagles, the Eagles have had quietly, mm. and, it, it, and it's amazing, too. It's, su- it's surprising they were so quiet about it. Yeah. They've quietly had the best offseason in the NFL in a division that has been the most improved in mm. the NFL. So while we've been gathering up the weapons and winning the offseason, whereas before it hasn't worked out, it made a lot of headlines, it got us all amped up, and then crashed and burned later on in the season. Yep. We've, we've done it in a way that's almost under the radar, and that I feels so. good. I think that so. That feels good. No, yeah. you guys are really under the radar. And, and looking at the, the Philadelphia Eagles, I mean, like Garrett Blunt, though, I mean, I kind of want to have a little bit of a back and forth with you. I, I, I'd say the Eagles offseason to be, you know, I look at other te- I look at other teams like the San Francisco 49ers, Carolina, okay. you know, even, you know, the Patriots getting Brandon Cooks. And I, I'm just not sold on the Garrett Blunt at running back the mm. corner. You know, Michael Kendricks is still right now. He still might be starting at linebacker for this Eagles team. So t- Timmy Jernigan's a good pickup. I, I'd say that, like you have solid players, but it's not like you're out there getting absolute superstars, though. Well, what they did is they played for this season and they also played for the future. Look at what they did with the NFL draft. I mean, getting Sidney Jones in the second round, that is huge for next season, especially look at what they need. I mean, you basically need three cornerbacks right now in the NFL. Nickel defense is a base. So who can step up alongside Jalen Mills, you know, for this season? You're not going to have it for this year, but for next year, you're going to have Sidney Jones, Rasul Douglas, entering his second season and maybe somebody like cj smith somebody that i've been talking about a lot undrafted out of north dakota state last year entering his second year in the scheme maybe he's somebody 
that steps up during the preseason. That's what sure. makes preseason or, so or, fun. Or, or how about so. Nate Gary, you know, Nebraska, that, well, that linebacker. We'll, we'll, we'll see. You know, we'll see. He's, You're not as hot on Nate. Well, it, I mean, and, he's a six-round pick. You can't expect too much from and, him. And, and don't confuse best offseason for being the best team. I think <laughs> the Philadelphia Eagles going into this season mm-hmm. are the most mm-hmm. improved team in the NFL. Mm. You're talking about the worst wide receivers. We all used to – complain and whine about James Thrash and Todd Pinkston. That wow. that group last year made me wish that James Thrash and Todd Pinkston were still on the <laughs> Damian team. Damian Douglas, bring the him back. The interior of that Kevin offensive Curtis. line was a sieve. They yeah. shirt up the interior of the offensive line. They got another pass rusher, Connor Barwin, as much as we loved him. He was beloved in the city of Philadelphia. He wasn't getting the job done on the end. Neither mm-hmm. was Vinnie Curry. You go out, you get a guy like Derek Barnett in the draft. You, you sandbag J- Sidney Jones for a year. I mean, do- most improved doesn't mean best team in the NFL. Doesn't necessarily mean best team in this division. But they are the most improved. And the attestment to that, too, I mean, you look at a couple years ago when the Eagles got Nam Diasimo, a great a cornerback from the Raiders, you know, coming off of his prime. And then he ca- came, you know, soaring from, you know, the woodworks coming all the way down and man, being a huge bus free agent, you know, signing for the Eagles. Yeah, the but, you know, team. everything is all in the trenches and always building up front exactly what you were talking about, be able to get that cornerback set right. And, you know, Jim Schwartz is dialing up that for- the, that defense there. And to be able to build that defense up from the four, you know, from the front four, yeah, yeah. that's how you're going to get to the quarterback. And that's going to help out your cornerbacks, yeah. your linebackers. You can ha- you have seven yeah. guys back, have four, you know, four uh, front four. And I think that's just going to help your defense out and then put a lot less pressure on Carson Wentz coming into his second yeah. year. My, my question is, can Brandon Graham be as dominant as he was last year? I mean, th- you know, for the first three years of this guy's career, Eagles fans were complaining, oh, we could have had Earl Thomas. We could have had JPP. Instead, we get Brandon Graham. But last year, Brandon Graham, I don't know if he made the Pro Bowl. He was he was sensational. I don't know if he can follow up that consistency. Maybe he can. And then you bring in long, I guess it's crazy. Chris Long from the New England Patriots. Yeah. Well, he, he kind of was a third down rusher. I don't know if he's going to beat out Barnett and start on this team. So what do you think about the defensive line? Can they be as dominant? Because Fletcher Cox, he took a decline last year. Well, Fletcher he, Cox he, after he, signing that big money. He just took the uh, decline in, in the numbers, but he was getting double team, triple team nearly every snap. So I don't look at that. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. Fletcher's going to ball this year. You know, Long Cox, we got that tandem going on it's going to be great so Timmy Jernigan along with Cox I mean that's great rush up the middle you got the ends you got Brandon Graham now he's a guy that's great on the edge setting the run in the run game quarterback maybe he can get to the quarterback a little bit more he doesn't always get the sack at the end of things but you know something to point out too I mean a lot's going to depend on the cornerbacks too if you cannot stop that quick three-step passing game Eagles weren't able to do that last season Mm -hmm. so if you can't do that can't pressure the quarterback. So you, a lot of it has to do with the cornerback play. Do you still see Ron Brooks as like as the nickel corner primarily yeah. Uh, of, yeah, the, yeah. of this football team? And then you were mentioning you went, you guys both went to the training camp. Uh, t- talk mm-hmm. about the the new cornerback Robertson, Patrick Robertson from you know Atlanta. Talk about uh, his his training camp thus far. Yeah, Patrick do, Robinson. Do we have to? Yeah, you, you, you go ahead. You can take it's it. It's all positivity. No, no, no it, it, it's not. I mean, <laughs> and, the pro- and the problem is you hear, you know, how badly beaten. Because the Eagles don't have a lot of open practices. This isn't in Lehigh where you could go there every day. Right. Chip up Kelly close. set up the CIA. Y- yeah, uh, yeah Chip, Chip Kelly kind of screwed the fan base in more ways than one. And one of those is basically taking away training camp from the fans. You know, New York Jets had nine open practices. Nobody mm-hmm. wants to go see Jets training camp. No. Nobody wants to go see Jets training camp. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. Who wants so, to sp- – if you spy on them, you're going to get worse. Yeah, but there, were, there was 33,000 people, I think, combined at this year's training. I mean, there, Actually, there was like 60-plus, I think. 60-plus? 60 60,000, 60, yeah, 60 for the combined. Combined. Yeah. Wow. So, so it's one of those things where you're, you're packing a stadium more than the Phillies do. So yeah. why, why, yes. what, what yes. sense does it make not to open that? I, I, st- I still, to this day, can't understand it. Yes. But what we have to rely, me guys like me and him and everybody listening here, we have to rely on the beat writers, all right, yeah. and the guys that are, that are tweeting videos, uh, the radio guys, the newspaper guys, um, to get our information. And the feed is not good on Patrick Robinson. The mm. question then becomes, all right, who, who, who we got better to replace him? 
Razul <laughs> Douglas, rookie, do you really want to put him out there and have him take his lumps? He's been a little, you know what I mean? I don't yeah. want to ruin a cornerback's confidence by throwing him out there too early. Yep. So besides Patrick Robinson. But 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 you're going to, but Sidney Jones, though, you rock, you're going to have to throw him into the fire eventually next year, too. So next don't, year. don't next you want to get those, yeah. don't you want to get those valuable reps? So are you saying like maybe uh, play with, that's, maybe a, play that's, with that's up, that's up to the coaching to staff. Bu- not, bubble wrap him like Embiid. That's how I'm playing it. Yeah, Sidney Jones, we won't see him in, hopefully until, until next year. Mm. But as far as Razul Douglas goes, I'm not in that meeting room. You know, I, the, in other words, to try Patrick Robinson out there uh, and start him <laughs> opposite Jalen Mills, there has to be a, a, a Bradley a good... Fletcher comes to mind. Look, Patrick Robinson Fletch. is like if you took Leotis McKelvin and stuffed him inside of Bradley Fletcher and then took that and <laughs> stuffed it inside of Nam Diasimo. It's just a bad cornerback turducken. There you he go. He's terrible. But <laughs> I'm not sure how many other options you have at Throw this point. Throw in some Patrick Chung yeah. action there, maybe. <laughs> I keep throwing that name C.J. Smith out there. I mean, the, the reason why is a couple of the things that I saw from last year in the preseason. Granted, it was in the third quarter, fourth quarter, so you don't want to yeah. drink too much of the Kool-Aid. But some of the things that I noticed, the, he jumps the quick slants, he jumps – the quick passing game. And again, that's something that I talked about. If you want to maximize the pass rush, you got to be able to stop the quick three-step passing game. Right. you got Jalen Mills. All right? He could be average this year. That's what you're hoping for, average play right. at the cornerback he spot. Lacked, he lacked speed, yeah. yeah. So you got him. Speed, yeah. you got Ron Brooks. Maybe you got average nickel play. Who's going to be that other guy? It's Patrick Robinson. Uh, we'll see. Right. You know, So maybe it's C.J. Smith. Maybe he's a guy that emerges by the end of the season. The example that I give here is Anthony Brown the Dallas cornerback from last year as a rookie uh, last four or five games of the season. He was really, really good for them. So maybe that's something, you know, that's something to look for uh, with these corners. Somebody emerges. And to add to your point, you know, with this young cornerback group, they do have picking up young guys in free agency, picking guys off of the practice squad. I mean, looking at this early part of the regular season, they already got, you know, facing some top 10, you know, caliber quarterbacks. I mean, obviously uh, Eli Manning and the Giants, obviously early as well. You still have the Chargers, Phillip Rivers, Still playing at the top of yeah. his game. You still have Cam Newton. You're playing. Um, you st- and I mean, you got so, the Cowboys so, obviously so up and rising. You spoke about so. C.J. Smith. How tall is Smith? He's like 5'11", 6 feet. So, and, and Jalen Mills isn't exactly that tall either. That's why no. Terrell Pryor might be a problem. You know, that's why Jordan Reed, hopefully Hicks can stick yeah. Jordan Reed. Yeah. But you look at Washington. I think Washington, I think Kirk Cousins takes a lot of flack, but I think Kirk Cousins can have a pretty decent season. I mean, Josh Doxson, who the heck knows how he's going to pan out for the Washington Redskins. But, you know, last it, preseason's a great time, you know, for you to get excited about like no name wide receivers, like guys Kay- that like, are never going to do like, anything, like Caleb Jones from Arizona. I was like, this guy's tall. This guy's making a couple plays. Like maybe we'll see him around. Mm-hmm. How about Paul Turner? Paul Turner, oh, Raheem, Paul Turner. Raheem Moster. I mean, these guys always pop up every single year, but none of them ever really amount to anything, do they? E Rock. Marcus Johnson. Marcus Johnson. Marcus that's the guy Johnson. that everyone's talking about that's, right that's, now. That's Marcus Johnson is Greg the, the Ward, the quick Turner. shifty guy. <laughs> Talk about him too. Sure, but but go, so. go touch it back on your point real quick about you know the, the secondary and uh, every team has holes. Yes, every, every, every single. I mean, look at the Dallas Cowboys. For as talented as they are, <laughs> they took our <laughs> cornerback, and that's now the, Nolan Carroll. Nolan that's Carroll. now their starter. So when the Eagles approach the off season, the, you know you got to list the needs and how are you going to fill them. They decided to sure up the lines. They got to get Jernigan. They got to draft a defensive lineman. They got to get wide receivers. They have to address the running back position. You either go heavy on three of those four and let one slide, or you go kind of halvesies on a, yeah. a little bit of everything. And 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 touching back on your point, Adrian, is that they're building for next year. It yes. isn't about this year. I don't think yeah. the Eagles are a Super Bowl team this year. No. But wait no. until Cindy. Give it another off season. Let's, d- let's dump some it, older players, it, some cap, create some cap, sign it, some free agents. It's, it's a mm-hmm. puzzle. I mean, you do have – the problem is you do have some aging players. Like, I guess, like, Garrett is an aging player, but running back's a position you can fill. You know, Nigel Bradham isn't the youngest player. I mean, he might be entering his prime, but then you look at, you know, Jordan Hicks – 
and, and Timmy Jernigan. Well, Timmy Jernigan. So, so you're you're combining veterans, and I just hope that this defense with Jim Schwartz, it seems ready to compete right now at a oh, pretty yeah. decently high level. Would you say? Definitely. I mean, the way they played against Pittsburgh last year, the way they played against Chicago, Malcolm Jenkins, pl- he played unbelievable again against Chicago. Mm-hmm. Well, to piggyback on your point about weaknesses. This team does have a major hole, hole at cornerback. So that's what teams do. I mean, after the Redskins game, the quick three-step passing game, that's what happened to the Birds. That's how teams exploited our weakness. Because that Pittsburgh game, week three of the year. I mean, the week, first month of the year, the defensive line was balling. A lot of sacks on the quarterback. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, and then oh, the coordinators yeah. figured us out. And, you know, and that's sure. It. And, the, and the same thing, I was having a conversation with somebody today about, like, Michael Vick. Yeah, and how the Minnesota Vikings basically remember that remember that what was it that weird Tuesday night game or something like that the Minnesota Vikings figured out he can't roll yeah, he can't yeah. roll to this side so yeah. every defense in the NFL game plan the same exact way the Minnesota yep. Vikings did and with when uh, when we were absolutely you know thrashed with those quick uh, against the Packers right yeah right? yeah so when yeah. we were getting lit up by just yep. Aaron Rodgers every getting the ball out of his four, hands just yeah easy. just just. 1.5 seconds is out. I don't yeah, care what yeah. you do. You can Can't wide nine me until you're blue in the face. Yeah. You know, it's ne- it's never gonna. You're never gonna get there because the ball's it's gone, deep. bro. Right, right. Yeah. Matt Stafford is throwing, you know, incredibly fast, and yeah. and Aaron Aaron basically held the ball from the Eagles in that Green Bay game. You know, you looked yeah. at Sam Bradford. I mean, he blew that game versus the Eagles. He kept on turning the football <sighs> over. Sam Bradford. Sammy Sleeves. You you want to go Sammy's. take this one, you I, I think I think <laughs> Vikings fans Sammy maybe bad. they still like maybe they still enjoy Sam Bradford. Like because in the Midwest they're different. You know they're more patient about their sports there, teams. There's out there. nothing different about what the Vikings fans are doing right now than what the Eagles fans did two years ago, which is <laughs> which is via via pro football focus and mm-hmm. bogus fugazi numbers right. try to justify to themselves that Sam Bradford is legitimate top-tier quarterback in the NFL when indeed he is nothing more and will never be more than average. Well, the Vikings, they want him to be a really top, you know, flight quarterback. They gave up a first rounder and they don't know how <laughs> Teddy Bridgewater is going to come back from that, you know, devastating type of leg injury sure. this past off season and, you know, a couple of seasons ago. But I just think that they're just hoping he can develop into that quarterback. Maybe he can How get into the right system. How long do you right give system. a guy to develop, though? For good. <laughs> I mean, oh, I mean God. There's, but there's good some, God. You, but you know what, though? For 18 years. But you know what, though? There's some it's like a doctor being in a, NFL. Being I mean, a med school, you know, for 12 years, and he still can't diagnose, like, a cold. <laughs> well, here's the problem with Sam Bradford. I think he was given the keys. Where do we start? I think he was given the keys too early, obviously, out of o- Oklahoma. Oh, they, he was a first-rounder pick. Oh. He was given all the, the keys to the city, you know, to able to start and he got it was so injury prone in st louis <laughs> he didn't have the right players around him i didn't think he had the right he's, coaches he's injury prone because so he, look, like, he looks like a I halloween feel, character with his i sleeves. feel like there's some players out there who need the right coaching to bring the best out of that certain individual and i i feel sam bradford hasn't had that opportunity i mean look at the obviously the teams he's gone to but yeah he couldn't stay upright you know with his injuries and torn acls left and right but you know i feel like there is there's there is some way you know for other other players and coaches to you know, yeah, when, do he, better, when, when he when he will, turns forty, it's yeah. finally going to click. It's like, oh wait, no, that's what they would say. It all makes sense. Unless now. unless if you're Tom, unless you're Tom Brady, you're going to play until you're forty five. That's it. He's, he's going to turn. That dude can play man. until he's sixty three. I still say, start that. dieting on some beans and crazy stuff that Giselle's feeding you, and go, you know, produce more here's, kids in Montana or whatever the heck he does. Here's the epitome of Sam Bradford. Like last Thanksgiving, fourth and nine, check down with the game on the line. That is the epitome. How did we get on Sam Sam Bradford? Uh, Tomorrow's Eagles football. Carson Wentz, we're talking about Sam Bradford. Wentz wagon, baby. I'm talking about Sam because it's amazing the transition, though. When Sam was dealt for a first rounder, it was jubilation in the city. Everybody was jumping off the ship, and then Carson hit Jordan Matthews. It was pandemonium. The first game versus the the Cleveland Browns got off to a 3-0 start. Carson Wentz, just he really stepped up. I mean, one thing about Carson, though, is even in that Cincy game, he is going to make his release more compact. He's such a hard worker. What do you guys like about Carson Wentz? Just mentally listening to him in interviews. Was it the trip out to Fargo with all of the wide receivers? Why are you guys so confident in Carson Wentz? Well, he definitely seems like he has the it factor, all, all the leadership qualities that you look for in a quarterback. And what I'm 
loving right now hearing out of training camp. He went out during the offseason. He, he obviously made all those mechanical changes last uh, June, or actually a month ago in June during the OTAs. He was struggling a little bit. But now they're saying he's hitting everything in camp. And it's going to be imperative for him to start this season red hot because of how difficult those first six games are. And you're going to be experimenting, shuffling among the secondary, especially at the cornerback position. Obviously, the safeties are fine, but cornerbacks, you're going to be shuffling them around. So Carson Wentz, he has to start the season hot. And you look at week one, that Washington game, it brings me back to 2000 and the pickle juice game. Andy (laughs) Reid's second year, Doug Peterson's second year. That game really propelled the Eagles throughout the whole season. It set the tempo. And the Eagles, they've been struggling against the Redskins over recent years. If they can go down the FedEx field, get that win, it could really catapult them for the entire year. So we'll see. You're absolutely right. You you, you just spoke on his voluntary training, right? To help go into a quarterback guru and trying to help with his mechanics. Mm -hmm. You can learn mechanics. You can learn a playbook. You can learn how to set your feet. You can learn how to throw a ball. You can learn how to read a play. What you what you can't be taught is leadership. And this man cannot be rattled. If mm-hmm. you remember last year, looking down the barrel of the gun, making throws, getting hit, popping right back up, encouraging his teammates. Leadership is something that you either have or you don't. Because you can have talent. You can have an arm and throw it a mile. You can have all the skills in the world. You can be taught the playbook. Look at Jay Cutler in friggin' Miami. All right? Mm-hmm. And then look at Carson Wentz. There's a guy who has no leadership, and there's a guy, Carson Wentz, who has all the leadership. You either command the huddle or you don't. Mm. That man commands the huddle, and that's what's exciting. Absolutely. And, and, and Shank, I'm going to let you talk about Carson Wentz, but when I look at quarterbacks, you know, Ryan Mallett's a perfect example. Coming out of Arkansas, I was so sold on the arm strength of Ryan Mallett. I thought Ryan Mallett would be a transcendent talent, you know, what coming into this league, or even Jamarcus Russell. Even though Jamarcus, that was before he was eating packs of donuts every single day. He's on the Dunk- park. Well, <laughs> I wanted He's to talk about, you know, yeah. even though, I, but sorry, yeah, but 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 I think Carson's system here with Doug is, is the most quarterback, very quarterback-friendly room there with Chase Daniel, who was essentially like a teacher to him, but go ahead. Absolutely. But what you were talking about with the whole Carson Wentz and to comparing, you know, different quarterbacks, Jay Cutler and obviously Carson Wentz obviously can't compare him because when you when you learn about what Jay Cutler said recently, I don't know if you've heard of him recently. No. He was saying that how, oh, well, I'm a quarterback and I don't really need to be fit and, you know, running on the treadmill all the time. And, you know, I'm just the quarterback yeah. in the pocket. I don't need to do that much. That can that just separates themselves from the pretenders from the contenders. And when you see Carson Wentz in the off season with all Sean Jeffrey, you know, in those voluntary workouts saying, Hey man, I want, I want to win a Super Bowl. You on board with me here? Alshon Jeffrey is like, all right, let's go. Let's go catch some balls. That's what gets it done in this league. And what you were talking about as well. Um, basically trying to, you, you can't, not teach, you know, in game in game experience because you need the you need to get hit, you need to get back up, you know, and sometimes you just gotta throw them into the fire, and that's how the best, you know, some of these players learn yes. is for these in game experience, making big time throws in big third down situations when you need it, and in big time in big time moments in games, and that's how what what separates you know from the best players I mean, in, we, we, in the we, NFL. Yeah. When you're able to land arguably the top free agent in this year's free agency crop mm. Be, and and have that individual turn down more years from the Minnesota Viking Vikings because Carson Wentz said to you hey I want you here because I want to win a Super Bowl with you that's a guy who's played one year you don't tell me that's not it like the, you know like what I mean toy. that is 100 million it. percent mm. that is it right there mm-hmm. You know, absolutely. I mean, you get you see these guys. I mean, they just want to just, you know, take a paycheck, paycheck and go home. But, you know, he, seeing Carson Wentz saying that, I mean, you know, me being a you know crosstown rival of my uh, New York football giants here. But, you know, I, obviously I, Carson Wentz, he's got the it factor here. Yeah. And, you know, he wants to win and he wants to develop. He wants to improve. And, you know, I, I admire that in a quarterback. That's, that's something, the intangibles, because that's another thing about when you're evaluating talent. It's all about the intangibles, and you can't coach those intangibles. I mean, look at Tom Brady, picked in the sixth round in 2000 draft. He didn't know how bad, a lot of people didn't know how bad it, he, he wanted it. And, you know, you, those intangibles are just so hard to measure, and... And that's what makes it great. No, yeah. and, and winning a locker room. But, you know, you you know, as Giants fans like me and Matt were talking earlier, 
And the the only hope for the Giants really to go against Carson Wentz is is could this throwing motion hamper him? Because you've seen like Tebow deal with throwing motion problems. And Carson loops it. He does loop it. He does stick his elbow out when he throws the ball. The velocity is there. And also, you know, this offense, it really limited him. He didn't really have a deep – he didn't throw a lot of deep balls last year. So do you, do you expect this – do you, do you expect Torrey Smith to really be a deep ball, you know, receiver for the Eagles this year, really open up the offense and let Zach and Torrey go down the field, Adrian? Yeah, well, obviously they didn't exactly have any burners on the field last. Year. <laughs> Jordan Matthews is like is like molasses. Watching molasses. Josh, Josh Huff it, was a burner uh, in another well, way. Yeah, and and, and, and yes. then Bre- Bryce Treggs. I mean, he had one catch, and then everyone went nuts on Twitter. I remember that yeah. about that. The, Paul Turner was everyone's hero, <laughs> but the the difference is, I mean, you, Alshon Jeffrey, Torrey Smith. I mean, just being able to loft it up in the air and let him go get a fifty fifty ball. That's the difference between last year and this year mm-hmm. is that 50-50 ball. When you're scrambling out of the pocket, you're not looking downfield for Bryce Treggs. You're looking downfield for all shot Jeffrey. That's mm-hmm. the difference. Yeah, and and you mentioned that, you know, the cornerbacks the Eagles are going to be playing Adrian. Adrian FedQ here, he has, you know, a whole list of cornerbacks here in his notebook. Oh, yeah, he, ra- yeah. he ranked every one. So, you know, you look at Washington, they have one tremendous corner in Josh Norman. Uh-huh. So Josh is going to be playing physically against Alshon. But then, Adrian, they have Bashad Breland, who's not that great of a corner. The Eagles uh-huh. moved the ball on the Redskins last year at will. You know, Bashad Breland, and also they drafted this kid Fabian Moreau from UCLA they, they have a real void I believe at their second cornerback slot and I don't think their linebackers are tremendous in coverage either so if Norman do you see Josh Norman really locking down Alshon and, and does that open it up for Tory and the rest of these guys in yeah week it's, one? it's funny because he had that Bleacher Report article where he came after Odell came after Dez <laughs> but he didn't go after Alshon too much <laughs> right Josh Norman is is more of a zone corner than a man corner and He's not going to be able to f- out physical all Sean Jeffrey. All, all Sean might be able to eat him for lunch and dinner <laughs> and brunch. That would be fantastic because to see uh, Josh Norman get home. And that's the exact reason why I think Josh Norman is a o- overpaid too. And I think he's definitely, I think he's overrated. I think, yeah. you know, he's definitely more, like you said, he's a more of a zone type of, of cornerback. Mm-hmm. I mean, he got eaten yeah, up, you know, by Odell Beckham, Des Bryant. And, yep. you know, I just think that, you know, Josh Norman can be had. And I just don't think he, you know, he can get into, you know, Odell can get into his head. So can Des, and he, so can Alshon Jeffrey. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, if you get into somebody's head, it's going to throw throw them off their game. And the truth, they're not so. going to play at the highest level that they can. Josh Norman really did get into Odell's head, though. You, you guys, you, you know, think? the Eagles guys. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do you think Odell gets into his own head? Just, just as Eagles fans, when you guys look at Odell Beckham, do you you, are you kind of glad not to deal with that immaturity, or, or would you take that immaturity? I, 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 I take him. I, I take him. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I take, take him. But I, the immaturity and the punching the walls or growling at the walls or, or fighting a kicking net um, is, is is annoying. <laughs> but uh, when yeah, you have that yes. level of talent, but you're the meme I, king. You could have a lot of fun with that. But I do, and that's what makes yeah. it so enjoyable. Yeah. Is like I like him <laughs> on another team so that I can make fun of him. There you go. But I would take that kind of talent <laughs> really any day. Yeah, the, kid, the, kid, the kid's a superstar. You yeah. know was really interesting tidbit? Was last year Zach Ertz was yelling at a rookie because he was headhunting in training camp. And I, Doug Peterson, in his first go around, it was like he was riding a roller coaster for the first time, and he was just putting it in full gear to start off the year. He was kind of a little bit nervous, kind of maybe had a lot of adrenaline because the practices were so physical last year from mm-hmm. what you read. And, and is that why this team started out so well? Because against Chicago and really against Pittsburgh, they just look so much better conditioned than the Pittsburgh Steelers in that game. I mean, I knew that, that Pittsburgh was coming into a hornet's nest here. I knew the Eagles would win that game, you know, and I knew that the Schwartz defense would be had because of the physicality of training camp. Yeah, and, and, and uh, I, I just think Carson really started off hot too. I mean, the, the ball placement of... His touchdown passes, even that Cleveland game. You, you talked about Jordan Matthews, just perfect in stride. He was doing that the first month of the year. So, and then and then talking about the defenses, uh, or the offenses didn't figure us out yet defensively. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we were still able to get to the quarterback at that point. And Chicago has a dumpster fire at O line. So at least at the tackle spot. 
So you you look at, you know, you, you guys have had Andy Reid for a really long, long time. And we're, we're, you guys watched the Kansas City Steelers playoff game last year. Erock, did you watch that game? Kansas City, Pittsburgh last year in the playoffs? I might have been so in an Andy Reid's- state of mind. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I vaguely remember it. He's the king of going 12 and 4. And then yeah. he always dips out. You know, he can never take that. He's always a bridesmaid. He's never a bride. You know, that, that's really Andy Reid. So do you guys have, ever miss Andy Reid? Or are you really excited about Doug Peterson? Because as Giants fans, you know, I was more afraid of Chip Kelly, the mad scientist. Because yeah. when Chip Kelly, when I saw that game against Don't the Washington. him going uh, on Chip Kelly. No, no, but I wasn't. I, when I saw Chip mm. Kelly against, you know, when trot out Michael Vick against the, the Eagles, they looked like a team from the future. They looked that unstoppable. But this brings me to my point on Doug Peterson is I just think Doug Peterson is very plain. Very plain head coach, not nothing too special. Jim Schwartz, he might even be a more talented coach. What do you guys think about Doug? What do you guys think about Peterson? Or, or, or here Chip, Chip, Chip Kelly was was the lucky charms of head coaches, right? <laughs> a, lot, a, lot, a lot of pizzazz, a lot of sugar, a lot of little different bits that made you all excited. Like, ooh, look at these little things and this other and this other stuff. Friggin' Doug Peterson is the Cheerios, all right? He is like <laughs> he's like the the cornflakes. Of, uh, of NFL cornflakes. We're what. talking cornflakes. He's the cornflakes of NFL coaches because he's good for you. He knows his stuff. He has a good system. He's just boring. He's just boring. Right. Are we excited for Doug Peterson? No. <laughs> you wake up in the morning, you want cornflakes, you want Lucky Charms. But the Lucky Charms are Fugazi. Fugazi Lucky you Charms. You know what's funny you're saying about that analogy, you know, with Lucky Charms? You know, I. Chip Kelly basically turned Lucky Charms into Cheerios when he gave away, you know, yes, he did. uh, Trying to remember yeah, the name here, Demarco. The yeah. You know all the marshmallows they gave away. Lashawn McCoy and you know obviously the, no, the what, outside what, linebacker what he did for nothing. What he did is nothing. take our cereal bowl and bring it into Dumped the bathroom it. and put something <laughs> else in it and then gave it to us. That's exactly. what we, that's what we were force fed as Eagles fans. No, there, there, no marshmallows in that. Yeah, yeah I, I know. <laughs> it, here's what I will say about Doug Peterson. I, I do like his aggressiveness on fourth down, and this is something that we see a lot. So Ooh, you look hot, at hot take. Hey, well, you see, you look at this up, upcoming season. I, I expect them to go for it even more on fourth and one, especially you got LeGarrette Blunt in the lineup. And something else that I like from Doug is when he puts that extra offensive lineman out there. So sometimes he puts six out there and something that we've seen in training camp or read in training camp, a little wrinkle to that uh, formation. Dylan Gordon, former tight end in college. So they had him along the goal line, six offensive linemen. Flip the touchdown pass to him. So, mm. something to keep an eye on this he's year. Well, you know, he's, can, a, he's can, adding wrinkles. Can I give you an unpopular opinion? Go ahead. I agree with you on the fourth down stuff. Uh, I, 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 I like the aggressiveness. I on love it. It's like Mike Tomlin. And I, and I like doubling down. You know, people are like, you double down, dude. You didn't get the first time. You didn't get the second time. Now we're losing the game. It's like blackjack. You know what I mean? You guys play blackjack yeah. down in Atlantic City. All right. Sometimes you double down, right? And you lose mm. the hand. You got an 11, you hit. The guy deal is showing four. You got an 11, you hit. You get like a three, you got 14, and then somehow miraculously he ends up with 21. He just lost double the money. So what do you do again? Well, all right, if I double down again, now we're even. You know what I mean? So I, I can't say that in a lot of those fourth down situations – that I wouldn't have done the same exact thing as Doug Peterson, not yep. once but twice. Yep, we got to hit a break here on 610 AM ESPN Rover Sports. We have E-Rock and Adrian FedQ and Matt Shanko joining me. More Eagles in preseason talk after the break. You've been injured at work or in a car accident? Still have neck and back pain? Time to call me, Bruce's Ford Stock. We're right outside of Philadelphia in beautiful Baldwin Tower. 610-521-6063. 610-521-6063. Operators on duty to help you. We're on your team in Delaware. Give us a call. 302-636-0920. Good night and good sports. Dealing with any medical issue is stressful. If it requires an MRI, even more. You don't have to face this challenge alone. Let us tell you about Open MRI of Balakenwood. Open MRI of Balakenwood has been serving the Delaware Valley for nearly two decades with a truly friendly and courteous staff. 
Open MRI will take the stress out of your procedure with spinal exams completed in as little as eight minutes while providing your physician with exceptional high-definition images, all with the quietest MRI in the Delaware Valley. So if you need an MRI, go to the fastest and go to the best. Open MRI of Balakinwood. Open Monday through Saturday to serve your needs. Call for an appointment at 610-668-3505 or on the web at Open. OpenMRIBala.com. That's OpenMRIBala.com. Welcome back into Rover Sports here on ESPN 610 Radio here in the city of Brotherly Love. And we have, again... Eagles legends here, Adrian FedQ and E-Rock, the legendary E-Rock. And E-Rock, I, w- I wanted to talk to you a little bit about something off topic, but it's not going to scare you too much. Don't worry. Okay. It's about, no, I'm scared. Fa- it's about fan bases in the NFC East, okay? <laughs> All right. So, you, so you have the Dallas Cowboy fans, and the reason why I think a lot of people are rubbed the wrong way with Dallas fans is because it's, it's America's team and because the Dallas Cowboys – they're transplants people that grow up have no relation to texas at all and Mm. still root for the dallas cowboys Mm. do those fans upset you more than anything is that your biggest beef with 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 the star yeah well biggest beef with this i got plenty of beef (laughs) with the star but getting back to your point there is a special place reserved in hell uh Mm. for 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 front runner Mm. people that (laughs) lack the self-confidence in this world to not be a cowboy's Yankees, Lakers fans, and they, you, you see too many. You see them on Twitter. I mean, they're, 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 they're all around. They yeah. root for all the successful teams. That is an individual whose father did not hug them enough. <laughs> that is an individual that can't talk to women. That is an individual, and I swear to God, I, uh, 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 this is the God's honest truth. I know a guy in Whitehall, Pennsylvania, who is a Cowboys fan for no other reason than the, when he was a kid, the brothers down the street used to beat him up, and they were Eagles fans. So that's why he's a Cowboys fan. That's the type of person who allows themselves to be a filthy, stinking, cockroach Cowboys fan, and it makes me sick. There's something mentally wrong with those people. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're at, on Twitter, hashtag Cowboys, hashtag Notre Dame, right? You're talking oh, yeah, about yeah, all yeah. those. But, but, but it's, a, it, it's amazing. Like You can't just be a Cowboys fan. You got to be a Yankees fan. You got to be a Lakers fan. You got to be. You you got to have LeBron in your friggin' uh, (laughs) profile. Yeah, profile or something like that. The good news about Dallas, though, is they they really haven't won a ton of playoff games. I mean, even Mark Sanchez has double the wins of you know of Tony Romo in his incredible career. Isn't it funny when Tony Romo retires? You know, he is just like this immortal character now. Like, like where people are talking about how unbelievable of a player Tony Romo was. And I think Romo's good. But do you think Romo is as great as everybody perceives him to be? No, he's, 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 he's new Danny White. Roger Stahlbach was a legend, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And then Danny White came along. Right. Troy Aikman was a legend. And then Tony Romo came along. He's new Danny White. That's all Super he Bowls. is. Uh, good regular season player. I mean, to tell you the truth, their defense didn't do him any favors. But, Shanko, what do you think about Romo? I think that was a good, what you were saying about the, the stall back to Danny White. Yeah. To, you yeah, know, that that's, that's completely makes a lot of sense. But I think about Romo, a, a quarterback who, you know, obviously couldn't get it done in the big game, especially in 2007, where he bobbled the snap against Seattle in that uh, NFC wild card game. Yes. Um, yeah, I had opportunities, you know, number one seed in 2008, couldn't get it done against against the Giants. Um, it, there was times, obviously, where he was clutch during the regular season. He brought team, you know, his team back to win, but he, he just couldn't stay healthy. He had a lot of back issues, a lot of different issues all over his body, and it's one of those things where the body, you know, brought it up to him and, you know, age, uh, you know, you know, come, caught up to him, and you know he just couldn't get it done. Yeah, I, I thought he was good his last playoff appearance. That was the only time I ever <laughs> really saw something from him during the postseason. Played really well against the Lions. He had the late touchdown, correct? He did. Where yeah. they, they they got away with a holding, uh, mm-hmm. you know, favorable call. But yeah, yes. and, and he was good against Green, Green Bay until Dez dropped it. So. He was decently good. I mean, he didn't take over the game. When he played with Dallas, though, it was our defense is so awful that we have to hold the ball the entire clock. And and, and Green Bay was just able to beat them. And uh, 
I mean, I mean, Minnesota and Green Bay really beat Tony Romo. And now with Jay Cutler coming out of retirement, I think the Denver Broncos are a possible destination spot for Romo. I really do. I don't know. Nice. He, he out, seems man. like he's he's, he's on the CBS yeah. doing the whole gym. Oh, because thing. since Maybe Cutler I left, since Cutler left, I just think that Tony Romo went out in a way that's so like. But- you know, humiliating to but, him having Dak just take a spotlight. But if I'm a, I'm a Broncos fan and I'm, you know, I'm John Elway, I want to see my young quarterbacks develop. You know, with Paxton Lynch coming out yeah. of of college, you want to see that guy develop and you know get the reps he deserves. Yeah. And you know, I don't want to see a guy who's you know injury ridden Tony Romo coming in and you know I said oh, Trevor Simeon. On. Don't pa- get me started with Trevor Simeon. Paxton Lynch and He's Trevor Simeon, and they're not the, getting it done. The perfect they're not spot. Getting it the done. perfect spot for Tony Romo was Houston. That that defense was already established. You had DeAndre Hopkins loves the back shoulder ball. Tony Romo throws that tremendously. That was the destination. The fact that he didn't really want to go there, I, I think he's fine with being the, the, the broadcasting. Be- the best destination for Tony Romo <laughs> is sitting in that chair. I mean, I mean, I mean, <laughs> as, I as, as much as I would man. love to, no, no, and this is serious. As much as I would love to goof on him, and as much as I hate him, like like he has had some serious injury concerns. So, yeah. so if you're Tony Romo's wife, like eventually you got to go to that dude and be like, "Listen, y- you're gonna break at some point. Something bad's gonna happen. Mm. You've had punctured lungs from ribs being broken. You've had back issues. You've had knee issues. You had shoulder issues. Eventually, you got to know when, like, enough's enough, man." Put so, the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. So, so as much as I would love to goof on him, yeah, he's better off in that seat for him and his family. Sure. Sure, you can keep the goof into it, Ezekiel Elliott and and players of that out. Hmm. But but you look at Tony Romo. I mean, I I do kind of respect Romo uh, and, and his. You know, even though on this show we don't like the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, his ability to take shots in the pocket. It wasn't a tremendous deep ball thrower, but I think Tony Romo is just. He's just too competitive, I think, to sit out. So if Denver comes a call in, Denver has such a great defense. So I I could see it happen. Mm. Was I, I oh yeah. Well, what I wanted to talk about, guys, was I wanted to talk to, more about to Iraq about NFC East fans that that you think are just the most maybe not vulgar, but just maybe the most annoying fan base, a, a team that maybe always overrates themselves, always is on message boards all the time. What, what fan base really irks you? Well, it, I mean, it, it's the Cowboys. Look, I, I frequent MetLife Stadium. Like I like actually where I live now in New Jersey. It takes me less time to travel to MetLife than it does Lincoln Financial Field. So anytime the Giants, or, you know, Eagles are playing at Giants, it's almost like, hey, we're taking the shortcut today, and I right. get to go up to MetLife. Sure. The Giants fans have been nothing but nice. I mean, honestly, I, I have I have this own little fan behavior etiquette thing from being at Lincoln Financial Field, seeing too many visiting fans come in and act like, you know, they shouldn't and act like they're asking for it. You know how to act in somebody else's house. But the Giants fans have been nice to me. Redskins fans are just uh, God bless them. They're hanging on. They they they're, they're taking a lot of punishment. So it's Dallas Cowboys fans that are just bra- brainwashed and, into thinking that they. You know what the funny part is to go back around to the Dallas Cowboys fans and calling them cockroaches and yeah, 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 all those yeah. other things. Yeah. Most of the people like pounding their chest and and chirping about how many Super Bowl rings they have, or more specifically, how many the Eagles do not have, were never even born for any of these. <laughs> For any of these Super Bowls, it's like, sure. you know, Mario Lopez, Vanilla Ice, and the Dallas Cowboys are still banking on stuff they put out in the 90s <laughs> for, some, for some reason. And these kids are talking about championships. Dude, you, were, you, you weren't even a twinkle in your daddy's eye when, you, when they were winning rings. And you know what's interesting? I mean, me and Shanko have t- talked about, you know, the Giants and our relationship with them. The, the Eagles, I almost feel a little bit, you know, bad for the for the Eagles in some sense because the oh, Giants, when the Gi- when the Giants win their Super Bowls, they've been ten and six, nine and seven. The oh, Eagles have ridiculous. have kind of owned the Giants, you know. When, when, even when the Giants come to Lincoln Financial Field, I mean, I don't have a great feeling in my stomach going against the Eagles and and just your your fan base. It, it's a really tough experience a lot of times. Like remember when you guys wore the black funeral gear oh, for yeah. us? Eli, Eli's scared of the dark. This is a fact. Eli, <laughs> Eli, always, do, doesn't he always get sacked? And even his first game, he got clotheslined. His first ever Eagles Giants game. So by one mm. Jerome McDougal. Mm. Yeah. Oh mm. wow, pulling that a name out of a rabbit hat. It's the only, it's the only nice. thing he ever did. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I, 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 how could you forget? It was the only That's play. 
never yeah, made. Yeah. Well, more when you guys, when you guys face, when, <laughs> when you guys face the Giants in the regular season, you probably still think miracle at the Meadowlands. You guys think about Jeff Garcia, the Shady McCoy um, toss that went the distance. You guys just seem to beat us in close games. So, what is it about playing the Giants? Do you, do you think you have that edge when, when you're when you're playing the Giants? Yeah, I, I mean, especially when they do the blackout thing, right? and and the Giants fans are close, so there's that rivalry. Obviously, I mean, there, there's there's cousins that are Giants fans. You know how it works. It's only, I mean, it's it's closer for you to get to the Giants stadium. You just mm. talked about it. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think a lot of it is that, and and uh, yeah, I mean, we just we just ball. On, on a lot of these games are on prime time too. So Sunday night, Monday night games, and do you, do you they look really, at, do they you, really ratchet up. Do the you pressure. look at Eli Manning and kind of resent him for being like a nine and seven quarterback that 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 kind of at big moments can just? I'm yes. not going to say like he lucks into. I mean, he oh, has. He, but, he, he's lucked and, into two Super Bowls. It, but but, yeah. but and then I'll argue. But to get there, he's played pretty dang well. You yeah, know, yeah, be, I, beating I, fifteen I, and I, one. I don't I made know. a couple throws. Yeah. yeah yes, it, there there is a little bit of a like how, how why. And 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 part yeah. and, and, and part of it is like, look, we went to the Super Bowl and played the Patriots too. Mm-hmm. We couldn't do it. You mm-hmm. guys did it twice. What yeah, the hell? They, they matched yeah. up Why? perfectly Why? with that Why? defensive line. Just you know, pressured Brady all game long, both Super Bowls. That's I really think won. I really think it's well, yes. Sorry. But to counteract your point about you know Eli getting lucky with the two Super Bowls, I mean we can go back obviously to Super Bowl forty two. Obviously, yeah, the David Tyree catch third and five. Yeah, it was a lucky play. He just threw it up to David Tyree, Rodney Harrison, just, you know, caught off that. But after that play, you know, that's not luck. That's all skill because you can eat, make that play. And after that, you know, you got to make the plays when it matters most. I mean, yeah, that that play specifically put him in the position, but you got to close. And yeah, Eli I mean, definitely it, is a great one of the great closures yeah, to ever th- play. Th- there's no doubt that he's clutched with the game on the line. But I, I, I think during those two playoff runs, the defensive line, when you, when you had Justin Tuck, I mean, you had Michael Strahan, OCU Manure. You had all of those guys just uh, during those postseason runs. I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but I remember uh, writing a column on this when I was at the Sports Network and just how many sacks they had. Uh, historically, one of the greatest defensive line runs of all time. So I, I think the defensive line is really... And that, and that's okay. where you need you know to make a Super Bowl run you just need to build you need like those characters like even Ray Lewis like a Michael Strahan you just need those leaders like Antonio Pierce and the defense it, you know Matt, Alex Smith went zero and eleven on third down that year in eleven mm-hmm. when the Giants were able to win yeah. Aaron Rodgers a fifteen and one team five turnovers yeah. R W McCorders with the interception and then mm-hmm. we, we, the Giants have had Corey Webster. They, they've had patchwork corners usually, and it was just that defensive line that was really able mm. to, to take them over the top. The one year that I, you know, uh, that I wish really the Eagles, they had a great opportunity was the Arizona Cardinals game. And uh, that was the last. That was the and, year and, 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 the Super Bowl. and that hurt Giants fans, 13 and three. You guys came in there with McNabb. Mm. And Eli couldn't throw through the wind, and you guys pretty much mauled us that day. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I and uh, great comeback in the Arizona game, but you know I still think that year was a pretty special year, beating Minnesota and then beating the Giants. That was their Giants year. That was the year where where they were five and five, five and six, or whatever it was. You had that Bengals in the tie where McNabb <laughs> yeah. didn't know there were ties, and then the next week they got trounced by Baltimore. So you know, and then they went and was that the Kevin Cobb game? When Kevin Cobb came in. No, no, no. Uh, oh, that oh. was that was at the near at bitter end of Andy, I think. Yeah. yeah so oh, okay. oh eight. Yeah. yeah. And and they beat the Giants. Obviously, divisional playoffs. And and then uh, uh, wild card. They beat the Vikings. I remember because Westbrook had that Ooh. big run. Remember. Yeah. And then and then uh, the Cardinals game. I think it's time, guys. You know, we got five minutes left here in Rover Sports. I want to hear some some preseason predictions, maybe some big overarching NFL predictions. What are you guys hoping for in this preseason? Who do you want to see step up and uh, and maybe some bold predictions, either with the Eagles or around the league? And I'll first start it off with Adrian. Yeah, I got my eye on the cornerback spot, a guy that I've been you know, kind of harping on my YouTube channel, CJ Smith, really, really curious to see what he can do during the preseason. Maybe just maybe somebody emerges and can be a starter on this team at corner. I, I want to see tomorrow night, Razul Douglas yep. play corner. Cause mm-hmm. I want, I want every reason not to, not to have Patrick Peterson on this team. Patrick for, Robinson. Pa- he Patrick, said Peterson? Patrick Peterson. Oh my God, I would love Patrick Peterson. <laughs> yeah, oh my yes. I would love to see Patrick Robinson play like Patrick Peterson. Oh, that would be and give you, That's what I was thinking. There you go. 
Yep, Lucky Charms and Corn Flakes. <laughs> so uh, I would, I would, I would love to see that and give me a reason not to have Robinson on this team and you know, you know, and, and and replace him in the starting lineup. Bold prediction. I will shout this to the moon. All preseason, the Eagles will win the NFC East. Bang! Uh, oh, for the not just for the preseason. <laughs> no, I will shout it all preseason that the Eagles, oh, yes, that yes. The Eagles o- will over, win. Over the New York Giants, over, over Brandon Marshall and yeah. Odell and, and that passing game. And, yep. then, and then you think with all the Cowboys' turbulence with Ezekiel, you think that that's going <laughs> to, to really hamper them? Then? The single most improved team in the NFL. Not the best team in the NFL. But the single most improved team in Listen, the NFL. If they, if they, win, that, if they win that oh, division, boy. host a whole <laughs> game in any way. You just open up he, another can of worms yeah, right there. He, he liked me up until like up five until, minutes. Yeah. Of the <laughs> Maybe like five seconds yeah. ago. Yeah, but, I mean, we could talk about that all yeah. day. But to quickly, yeah, you know, address that point, I think that, you know, obviously, you know, you're, you have pride in your Eagles and everybody, a lot of Eagles fans do in the city. Completely understand that. But, you know, when you have, you know, the talent level that, you know, the New York Giants have had, you know, getting last year, you know, the, you know, the, the Pierre Pauls of the world coming back and you have, you know, Olivier Vernon, and, you know, bringing Janoris Jenkins and you're adding this talent, Brandon Marshall, Sterling Shepard, and you've got this Evan Ingram this year. I mean, the sky's the limit. I mean, there's so much talent. I was saying this on the, in a couple of Rover Sports as ago when I was on the show that I think is one of the most talented Giants teams that they've had in the past, you know, 10 years. And, you know, with the talent level, you know, on paper, you know, it's really great. But let's see how well how it transitions, obviously, into, you know, if they, they can play well together. But, you know, but, you know, but on, on another record note, uh, for tomorrow night, I, you know, since I'm a, you know, a former offensive lineman, I want to see the full unit offensive line, you know, come as a group, not just the starters, because I know there's somebody on that offensive line that's going to get hurt. You know, in the in the year, there's, mm. there's it's, inev- it's no in, Allen, it's Bar- no Allen Barbary to come and play. But you know, I think you need guys that can plug and play. You know, in times you know people get hurt. You know, even like last year, I mean, there's a, a lot of guys yeah. who obviously got hurt. I, I want to see you know, say, say Amalo, so, I, Isaac say Amalo. Like, I'm very interested to see how he'll do first starting. Big V showed great signs, and and I guess Kelsey, he's going to be the future after Jason yep. probably passes on. You know, Big V there. Yeah. Is, he, is he okay? When he passes on, is he? <laughs> did we not? Did we not? Did, is there a medical report Jason out on him Kelly, or something? Jason Kelsey. I'll well, say my, it. I'll, yeah. Well, I was going to say my bold prediction is Dallas does not make the playoffs. That's yeah. that's mine. That that I agree. schedule of theirs is extremely difficult, and especially if you have anything going on with Zeke. We'll see. You know what? That's a stake that uh, you know that I had with Shanko. And I don't think Dak Prescott's going to perform the same way. I mean, the reason he was a fourth rounder is because his arm strength is not spectacular. Now, intangible wise, incredible leader, very mobile. But I, I just see a lot of distractions. And that defense, Cedric Fortin and Carroll are starting on that yeah. defense. So. Well, well, for for Dak, I mean, that offensive line for Dallas, the mighty Dallas O-line. But the last couple of years, they haven't gotten hurt. Nobody. There's no right. depth on that O line, and they're also making some changes too. You yeah. have Lael Collins moving to the right side. You got a new guard, uh, Jonathan Cooper. Right. I think, I think Chaz so Green Ronald, got hurt already, or something. Yeah, Ronald Leary isn't there anymore. So they've made some changes, yeah. and if somebody gets hurt, that's a problem for Dak. He struggles with pressure up the middle. That's what yeah. I saw in college. Didn't mm-hmm. have to worry about that. With that O-line, obviously. Sure. sure. And you, we'll, we'll see how Switzer does with their offense as well. Go ahead. You know what all that means, though? What's that? Eagles are going to win the NFC. Yes! I just want to get the last word right. I just I got to get the last word in. It's yeah, my we, nature. Yeah, we, got, we, <laughs> we will definitely re- revisit this topic. <laughs> As, I'll as see you in late along, December, bud. As we go along, we're gonna see. We're gonna set. Everybody's all peachy now. It's the honeymoon stage right here. Everybody's getting along before we set out to Survivor and before we go out to the island. So, I mean, I, I, week three is gonna be fantastic, though. And um, yeah, I I, I I just I just can't wait for the opening season with, with the Philadelphia Eagles and Benny. How much time we got left, man? Do I, do I have two. We have two Don't minutes, guys. Well, we have well, two well, minutes. Well, well, so we, we're not going to dip minutes. out early. Well, before before, before, before we do we, before we do dip yeah. out, yeah. Uh, we we do put on at Fourth and John uh, a nice little tailgate. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Down at Lincoln Financial this. Field, 
And last year we had uh, your dude Cop Izzle there. Oh yeah, our boy and, Cop. And and last year we actually had a license plate guy there. Oh, okay, so it's license. So plate while it is an Eagles tailgate, it is a celebration of football. And as long as we can all get along and have some beers together and yeah. and, and and some friendly, banter. you know, banter and ribbing, I, yeah. I would like to invite you guys at Rover Sports down to the Fourth and John tailgate and parking lot F one uh, for F1. the Eagles home opener F1. against the Giants. Oh you, yeah, you, please be my guest. I'll be there. License right. plate guy. What do you think about the dedication of a license plate guy? Maybe he has all these scars from the license plates. I don't I know wish if I they had go it. through his shirt. That's a beautiful head of hair. I though. wish I'll I had his hair. Yeah, I wish I had. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. And it's not a wig, right? We're sure. No, it is. That. No, it is oh, real. It, no, it's real. Oh, is it? It's all real. No, it oh, is. license real. plate guy. What figure? He's like. Fire, I'm, I'm, he's I'm, like I'm not sure his out. rap sheet is all real, <laughs> but the, the, the hair certainly is. Right, oh, cop? Absolutely. For for you know, going into an Eagles game, you know, as you get older, it gets more dangerous each year for us to, to, to go to the Eagles game. We nah, used to be amazing. below the Mason Dixon line, below 12 years old. You were fine. But you know, nah, you're fine. You guys are fine. Yeah, that, yeah, that, we're probably yeah. You, you guys will take care of well, us yeah, fine. As long as, long as you're and, rolling with Fourth and John and Philly influence. And then here, yeah, at, here yeah, at Rover yeah. Sports, I mean, we do talk about the Eagles and and come at it from a you know a uh, we try to be very neutral. And to tell you the truth, a lot of times, you know, you guys have had our number for quite a while. That's going to be a huge game, and you only get one game in the month of September, so that's unfortunate. Are you guys going to any preseason games? And and what do you guys got lined up here for your podcast the next couple of weeks? Well, I'm going to try and do some film studies and some of the off-season acquisitions, something on Alshon Jeffrey, maybe do something on Timmy Jernigan. Uh, I, I know you'll be at all the games. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm a season ticket holder, so uh, the first Tuesday before the season, we start the 4th and John podcast where we're able to say a bunch of bad words on the air and yeah. <laughs> act, act, act like hooligan <laughs> Eagles, fan, Eagles fans. Eagles fans we are. Fourth and John podcast and bitter birds guys and Adrian fed Q and, and E rock. It was a blast, man. You guys are welcome back anytime in the Thanks, world of sports. Yeah. Maddie shank right here, helping me out. And I want to thank Victor Cabrejos too. He's been great filming this and it's just been a blast having you guys collab with us. And uh, we'll, we'll definitely be keeping in touch uh, in the future soon. So, so Benny, I, I think we're good to roll. Rover Sports guys, Lambeau Field, the most legendary yes. arena in all of sports. And That's finally, good cheese. I love random nights of football on Friday or Thursday night. Just something more to do. Just something more to watch. So enjoy the week, guys. In Philadelphia, we'll, we will see you next Wednesday.